The European Union's push away from Russian energy has Moscow looking to diversify into a new market. Yeah, the most obvious option is Asia. Russia has already been supplying gas to Asia since 2009, but pivoting to increase its presence there won't be easy and will depend on foreign partners like China. To talk more about this is Nico Safos. He's the Schlesinger Chair for Energy and Geopolitics at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Nikos, welcome. Uh, what does President you. Putin of Russia need from foreign partners to make an expansion uh, into Asian markets uh, to make that happen? And, and what challenges might he face? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, Russia needs three things, really, from Asian partners. One, it needs money. We're talking about massive investments that go into the tens of billions of dollars if you're going to build up an infrastructure to deliver gas to, to Asia. In the past, Russia has depended critically on Chinese finance to make these investments possible. So that's one. The second thing, it really needs customers. It needs Asian buyers that are willing to look at what is happening in Ukraine right now and say, yes, I want to be more dependent on Russia. Uh, that is not going to be an obvious, easy sell. So it needs customers, governments, companies to say, I am willing to make a deal with Russia and get into a long-term relationship. But lastly, it needs technology. Particularly, there are two ways for Russia to deliver gas to Asia. One is by pipeline. It has the technology to do that. The other is by ship. It's a so-called liquefied natural gas. A lot of the technology for liquefied natural gas is Western. And so the question is, can Russia get access to that technology or find domestic alternatives or find alternatives from elsewhere to make up for the lost access to Western technology? So based on everything you've described, Nikos, plus the fact that the European gas market is bigger and far more lucrative than the Asian market for Russia, uh, what kind of timeline are we looking at here for this to actually be reasonably profitable for Russia? Yeah, well, Russia is coming late uh, to the Asian market. I mean, its entire history has been about supplying Europe. It, its own industry grew in tandem with the European market in the 1970s and 80s and 90s. And so it's going to take a long time to replicate in Asia what it has in Europe. Just to give you some very simple figures, Russia sells about 160 to 200 billion cubic meters a year to Europe. It sells about 33 to Asia. It sold 33 to Asia last year. Given its existing infrastructure, it could bring that number up to 60 or 80. So 60, 80, relative to 160 and 200. So that gives you a sense of what it could do in the next three to five years. But if it wants to go beyond that, it's going to, under, it's going to need to undertake some of those investments that we talked about. And that puts us in a territory of the early 2030s. Uh, at the earth soonest to really be able to wrap up those volumes. Mm. So we're talking about at least a decade out to even get close to maybe doing half as much in Asia relative to what it does in Europe today. Nikos, could mm. Russian energy expansion into Asian markets impact U.S.-Asian relations? A absolutely. In, insofar as, first of all, the U.S. is a major energy exporter these days, and so in some ways it competes with Russia for access to these markets. A lot of U.S. natural gas is actually getting shipped to Asia, uh, including China. And so in that way, the U.S. is a competitor with Russia. But more broadly, of course, the foreign policy overtures are, are, are obvious. You know, we are trying to isolate Russia. We are trying to weaken Russia insofar as they can find alternatives to the sanctions that we're putting on them you know, that makes our strategy more difficult in succeeding to isolate Russia and weaken its economy. Nico Safos, thank you.